Alright again, welcome back. This is a series where I review old films, new films, films I've seen before, TV shows and everything in between. And today we are reviewing Jerry and Marge Go Large, the unbelievably charming film starring Brian Cranston. You make me sick. His coral time trident screeches fancy like in the tempest. Yeah, well I love it. Everything that's good that's happened to me in my life came because of that. Jerry and Marge Go Large is a lovely story about a couple going into retirement. Jerry is very, very good with numbers. He's always worked like as a line worker in factories throughout his entirety of his life. Once he retires, he realizes that it's not for him and he needs to stay busy and he needs something to do. He accidentally realizes a fault in the National Windfall Lottery. This starts the story um, and then it sort of snowballs from there into them using the system to their advantage to win millions on millions of, of dollars to save their town. It was a very interesting opening to this film, getting a brief narration of what the film was going to be about and where we're starting out by Rain Wilson's character. Brian Cranston, once again, is uh, filling the uh, charming father, like fatherly role. Um, he often does and he often gets cast in these sorts of roles where he can play authoritative but gentle-handed at the same time, and he very much does fill that role in this film. The cinematography is fairly basic, it's nothing special. Um, in saying that, it's exactly what you would expect out of a film that is meant to be about a, a, like a smaller middle America charming story. The cinematography reflects that, so it's very, very basic and feels cozy. Um, but it, it's meant to reflect the story and the narrative that's going on and the characters as well. So it makes you feel that. And I think it was a good decision from the director. Because this film is based off a true story and it's based on real people, we don't spend too much time getting to know them. We spend more time on the heist, as it was, and on the plan that they have to use the lottery for their gain. I wish we'd spent more time at the start of this film, like easily throw the film just getting to know them, getting to really understand them so we'd have more of an emotional connection with the characters. Even though they did plenty, they were unbelievably well cast, they have such great chemistry, I just wish we got a little bit more time to spend with those characters getting to know them before we got into the actual bulk and heart of this story. His wife is unbelievably adorable and just so great, so great in this film, so good. Much like the actual scheme itself, in real life it was quite slow moving, this film is quite slow moving, it's, it's not, it's not going to be action packed. Um, it's charming and it's lovely to watch, but it's not action packed at all by any means. We've seen stories time and time and time again of the little guy taking on the big guy, of the little guy standing up to the man, the establishment. I don't actually think it's ever been told in this way before from this perspective and a story like this. It's nice to see a story told like this um, and it was a real change of pace and a, and a nice refresher um, to what we've been getting recently at, at the cinemas. The little details added in by like either the writers or costume or like the set or like anything like director or whatever. The little beats of when they win smaller things, they get nicer things like nicer glasses, nicer shoes. They only upgrade the smaller things. Um, and I think that's, it's like a view inside the characters themselves and like to the good people that they are. Um, I thought it was really nice. I thought it was a, a nice small little touch that some people might miss. So obviously if Brian's character noticed this fault in the lottery where they can make a lot of money, um, it wasn't going to be long until somebody else noticed it. And there's a duality in this story between Brian and his wife trying to save their town with the winnings from this lottery and, you know, revitalize businesses and save people from bankruptcy. And then the other hand, you've got the Harvard kid who only wants the glory, only wants the money, who only wants to be remembered and to get out of his father's shadow. So like the selfless versus the selfish is sort of where the story goes. Um, and it's nice, it's good, it, it works really well for this film. 
it works really well for this story. I don't know if that's how it happens in real life, but, you know, it happened in the movie and I like it. I mean, the Harvard douche called himself, he wanted to be a legend, like, ah, uh, so fucking annoying. I have one note here about our lovely main couple, and it's just, <laughs> my god, they are too cute. Why are they so cute? I can't deal. They just, they're adorable guys, they're just adorable. Please watch this movie, they're just so cute. <laughs> the douche's name, the Harvard douche's name is Tyler. That's sort of like a, um, that was, that was a body blow for me. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't come into this movie expecting to be attacked like this. I don't know, I haven't researched the real story of this film because I sort of want this film to exist outside of the real story because I enjoyed it so much. I think, however, one of the things I didn't enjoy about this film, if it was based in real life or not, was leaning so much on the Harvard douche cliche, so not just Harvard douche Tyler. Every other person around him for the majority of this film fits into the mold of the upper class, snooty, rich big man. And I know I said that's what they were going for. They're going for the underdog, the small guy versus the big guy. But they leaned on that way too much. We already had the lottery being the big guy. We didn't need so much of this douche here. Like we didn't need so much of, I guess what I'm saying is like, they could have toned it down. They could have pulled it back just a little and it might have felt less like a cliche that we've seen many, many times before. The Harvard douche seemed to have no layers to his character at all. Um, he seemed way, way too arch and was really giving me Neville Papman vibes from iCarly. I don't know if you remember him, but... Let the ruin begin. You feel it, Carly. You feel the rue. You feel it! <laughs> you shouldn't have done that, Carly Shay! You'll rue this day, you'll rue it! You feel the rue? <laughs> you feel it! <laughs> he was really giving me these vibes, just like the, uh, just such douche, such douche vibes. And it's really, really awesome and nice to see this upper class snooty buck just get fucking, dial back the Australia title. It's really, really nice to see uh, this character get his comeuppance and to get it in such a sweet, sweet, nice way. I don't want to spoil how it happens, but it's just... So Brian Cranston's character sees people differently in this film and because he's quite good with numbers, he's good with calculations, he sees the world that way and he's never really been able to connect to people in the way that he wants. And this movie very much spells out that that's the message and that's the, the crux of his character for this whole film, is that a man who can't connect with people for all of his life now finds a way to connect to people through his abilities that he was shunned for for the majority of his life. Um, and it's nice. It seems like a very... It's nice to see people get light shone on them that deserve it. Unfortunately, this movie isn't free of fault. Um, the dialogue for this film often seems stilted and cliched and it really, really did, it did take me out of the movie very briefly. I sort of eye rolled a few times being like, oh God, all right, that was a one-liner, that was a one-liner. Ultimately, you can look past it and you can see the charm, um, but it was something that took me out of the film. One of the other disappointing things about this film was the way that the Harvard douche Tyler's character is just sort of fades out of this film film like he does get his comeuppance and he gets it in a pretty great way he he loses all of his friends and people that are around that wanted to make money he's in the paper he ends up getting i assume kicked out of harvard um his dad comes and picks him up it's a whole really fucking funny thing <laughs> but it just sort of it just sort of happens it just he it, it didn't feel earned it didn't feel just by the end of the film, he's just sort of faded out of the film and the script as a whole. And it was just really disappointing to see his character and that character's arc end in that sort of a way. It just seemed unearned and a little lazy. 
Brian Cranston, Annette Bening, Rain Wilson, and all the other cast deliver on some charming and heartfelt performances that make this town and story feel more connected and grown. The runtime of this film also does leave me wanting more, only being 97 minutes long. Um, whilst that's actually not too bad, I really do wish that we got to spend an extra, you know, 20 minutes, 25 minutes at the start of this film getting to know Brian and Annette's characters way more, getting to know their relationship, their family, the town, really being invested and, you know, wanting them to succeed and maybe also getting a bit of backstory and adding extra layers to Tyler the Harvard Douche's character would have been really nice as well. The film is charming, all the way through from its casting, runtime and direction. It's nothing special or crazy, but the story that it's based on is. And that's enough for this film to get a 6.5. Alrighty gang, that was my review of Jerry and Marge Go Large. Have you seen it? Have you not? Let me know in the comments down below anywhere on this thing here. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Go check out Jerry and Marge Go Large on Amazon Prime now. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.